Hey, everybody, this is John Henry at Honest to God. Thank you so much for watching and listening. This episode, we get into a lot of content that may not be suitable. If you've got some little kids wandering around, nothing explicit, but this uh, we're going to be discussing birth control and natural family planning, and we say all the words, and we get into it pretty deep. So just a heads up, if you've got little kids around, you might not want to let them tune in for this one. Thanks so much. All right, ladies and gentlemen, hello and welcome. Super pumped to be here. You're listening to Honest to God on AM 1160, The Quest, Atlanta's Catholic Radio. We've got a great show today. We've got one returning uh, returning champion, Sarah, and then we have Valera, who's just now joining us, and it's going to be a great show. We're going to get into natural family planning, talk about just super light, uncontroversial topics. Not controversial at all. It's going to be killer. So thank you guys for being here. Thank you. Happy to be here. Would one of you guys mind leading us in prayer before we get started? She's looking like the Holy One. <laughs> All right, you got it. Right. Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Uh, come, Holy Spirit. Just enrich this conversation today and help us to say the things that you want us to and to be charitable through everything and provide information in a way that just helps others to see the beauty of your creation and the way that you designed our bodies, Lord. Um, we ask that you help us to just share your goodness and your beauty through it all. Um, through Jesus' name, amen. 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 Holy, the Holy Spirit. Spirit. Awesome. And I'm sorry, Producer Ben, I didn't, I didn't uh, introduce you on air. Producer Ben, as always, is in studio. And then boy. to my right, may or may not be... She knows Benny. He may be one person. He may be two. All we know is he has no corporeal form. And... Uh, mm -hmm. The infinite blackness feels like it's encroaching on the studio, but not in a bad way. We're glad you're here, or if you're if you're here. All right, so <laughs> oh we got a couple of uh, dictionary. We got a couple of uh, we we have a couple of guests, and we're I think we're gonna fly through fun this facts be today fun. because you just owe us one, Valera. You owe us five. Okay. So let's start with Sarah, though. All what right. So the only thing I could really think of because I'm not super fun these days. Um, the prerequisite for our car when we purchased our most recent car was that it would fit through the Chick-fil-A drive-thru. Oh, nice. Yeah, and does it? It does? It does. Yes, it does. Dude, you're rocking the Catholic assault vehicle. <laughs> Seriously. That's like car goals. And the newest bumper sticker, honk, if a, if a kid falls yep. out. I'm <laughs> actually getting honked. You've got, because it's, it's a 14, 14 passenger? Only 12. Oh, my. Okay. Amateur hour over there. Yeah, right. Okay, cool. But do you have the Save America, Pray the Rosary bumper sticker? It's on the Polaris. Heck yeah. Okay, cool. <laughs> That's the, the Catholic assault vehicles, man. I like them. I mean, we get the Utah, they're Mormon assault vehicles, but around here, they're still Catholic <laughs> assault vehicles. We have every single game, because you have children who are at the school where I where I work, and every single soccer game, basketball game, whatever, like four vans pull up, but there's also 200 people <laughs> who are at the event. So it's pretty cool. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right, Valerie, what you got? Five. Okay. Um, my first fun fact is that I was actually born a redhead. Nice. Um, and there's supposedly a theory that a redheaded gene makes you like resistant to anesthetic. Yeah, I've heard it's that. It's true. It's, it's very horrible. True. Yeah. I need so much Novocaine when I go to the dentist. It's awful. Wow. Um, oh shoot. I had all my facts thought up earlier. Um, my second fun fact is I play piano. It's how I met okay. my husband. Um, my third fun fact is I'm one of five girls and we own a gymnastics center. What, are there any boys or is it all? No boys. Okay. So I have I'm, I have five. My wife is pregnant with number five right now. And I have a boy, girl, 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 girl. Nice. So, yeah, it's exciting. We almost, we thought the last one was going to be a boy for a minute and they were wrong. So we did the, we did the blood test thing where they just do the scan to see if it's mm -hmm. a, a girl. But it's like 90, it's only 99.9% .9 accurate or whatever. And so my, my 11 year old was really holding out hope. And then <laughs> we went to the anatomy scan the other day and. No dice. No, so, no. I'm pumped. I'm thrilled. I'm excited. I like them a lot. That's All right. Awesome. I'm sorry. I think I'm, no, you're good. Keep going. Uh, it's giving me time to think a little bit more. <laughs> um, oh, man. Okay. That's three. You I got it, Valera. These. You got you it. You got this. <sighs> no pressure. Hey, just uh, listening four, to her in the other room. <laughs> she's brilliant. She, but, Highly intellectual. I love I it. I might add. Thank that you. does not count as a fun fact, though. Valera, <laughs> okay, okay. what you got? Sorry, you're on the spot. Um, my fourth is as homeschooled. Okay. Um, avid reader all the way through. So I, I attribute that. That's probably why. Just like consuming information. 
Um, right. I'm really into research and things like that. Um, number five. Let's see. You I know I can it. come up with another one. What's your What's your? Oh, my parents will have three children married within a year. Oh, that's awesome! Oh, that's cool. I'm getting new brothers. Oh, or my first brothers, I guess. Finally, so. <laughs> some brothers who are coming. Oh, so yeah. that's cool. So you're so you're married right now, mm-hmm. right? And now in the next year, three of your sisters are going to be married as well. Yeah. that's cool. That's awesome. Well, congratulations! Very excited about your Thank new you. your new brother in laws. It's we're weird excited. because I feel like this is so fast because we only have two people in the studio. Mm-hmm. I know it's odd. Well, what do you mean we're not going to burn the first twenty minutes of the of the hour just talking about random stuff? <laughs> <laughs> All right, cool. Well, that's actually it's a good thing because I want to get into this topic that I think we were talking before we got on air, and it is a it's a tremendous one, right? It's one that we could spend many, 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 many episodes on, and we probably will. We'll spend mm-hmm. more than this, so. If there is something that you want to get into a lot more later, yeah. say it out loud because we will 100% do an episode on it. I think right now we're on episode, what, 1247? Somewhere around there, yeah. Yeah, 1247. Clo- closer to 2000 okay. at this oh, point. Wow. Yeah, but, that was way mm-hmm. off. Um, but uh, <laughs> we we absolutely have time and we absolutely have space and I want to be able to dig into all mm-hmm. of these. So the topic today is NFP, right? Natural Family Planning. And it... I I think it ruffles some feathers in the world today. So I want, if you guys could, one of you could just tell me, what is it? What does natural family planning mean? And then we're going to use that as a launching point, and then we'll go down all the rabbit holes. It'll be a great time. Okay. I'll take it. You got it, Sarah. So when my husband and I will teach NFP for the engaged couples, we like to like lay it out pretty simply. And NFP is basically learning the indications that your body is giving you as a woman. Right. A guy is always fertile, Um, but taking those indications of a woman's body and figuring out, is it fertile or is it infertile? I'm like having a hard time. Where am I supposed to be looking? (laughs) Um, So is the information about your body fertile or infertile? And then using that information to help you either achieve or avoid pregnancy. So, I mean, with that statement comes this whole, to your point, rabbit hole, or maybe not a rabbit hole of like discernment. And in the Catholic world, that's an obviously very important conversation to have within this topic. Right. So discernment, we have to come back to it. And from a practical standpoint, mm-hmm. um, that has to do mostly with like tracking temperature yes. and stuff like that. Right? Yeah. So specifically, you're looking at body mm-hmm. temperature, cervical mucus, which is mm-hmm. always like the eye opener, like or the <laughs> you see somebody's face drop when you're going to try to say the word cervical mucus as much as yes, possible on to this make show people today. very uncomfortable mm-hmm. i always like to say it's no different i mean everybody has blown their nose right it, this mm-hmm. is not gross so um temperature cervical mucus your you've got fertility monitors mm-hmm. that register urinary hormones so at home testing of your hormones and um cervical positioning it's you know i mean all options are out there Different methods will use yeah. different biomarkers as well. Okay. So, yeah, yeah, my wife has a cabinet full of all the ovulation strips oh, yes. and a hundred mm-hmm. different little things. Yes. I don't know what they do, little machines yes. and little whatevers. Um, so I, I, I don't want to get super duper into the nitty gritty, yeah. but, but it basically boils down to... Learning your body and what it's giving you to figure out if you're fertile or infertile. Okay. And it's very straightforward. So, so. the question that always seems to immediately come up whenever you talk about natural family planning is we're usually talking that as opposed to contraception. And I can't tell you how many times I've taught theology of the body many times. And I get a lot of pushback in regards to, well, this is just birth control, right? Because I Mm -hmm. want to say in no uncertain terms, I want to make sure we get this out loud early on the show that the church, we have a serious moral issue with birth control. Birth control is something, right? Using barrier methods, using hormonal contraception, using whatever, right? Purposely preventing pregnancy through birth control is mortally sinful. Why is that not okay? And then why can I use NFP to, and that we don't have a moral issue with that. So the biggest distinction between the two is just the artificial means of birth Mm -hmm. control you're completely removing your fertility and the the marriage vows are um to love each other freely totally faithfully and fruitfully and if you're blocking out that fruitful um aspect altogether then you're abusing marriage you're abusing each other's bodies you're not accepting them completely um you're not giving yourself totally um and there are arguments as well that it's not free or faithful either Right. Um, but 
natural family planning, you're not disrupting God's design in any way. It's actually a sacrificial love that you're to use. NFP can be sacrificial. Sure. And it can also grow your intimacy as a couple. That's another topic. But you're choosing to set aside your desire for your spouse mm-hmm. and laying your, your life down, dying to yourself, as we say often, um, for the good of your marriage and to maintain right. that fruitfulness. And you're not, there's not like any method that's 100% accurate because God might, if you're not blocking God out, then he might say, all right, well, here you go. I know this right. doesn't Surprise. make sense, but there's a baby. Um, right. And so you're allowing God to work through you still. I mean, you get the, this is just Catholic birth control. Mm-hmm. And I get it all the time. Like, why is using an FP okay, but birth control isn't? Mm-hmm. And it's not because it's, natural birth control right it's not it using nfp to her point is embracing the babies and bonding aspect of what sex is meant for and whereas with birth control you're actually removing the fertility portion and saying that babies is not welcomed within this act we're removing the baby's part from the bonding part and we've been taught even through humane vitae babies and bonding have to be um, kept together within each of the acts. And so there, Christopher West has a fantastic analogy. Quickly, he references how the difference between using natural family planning and birth control is like when a couple's preparing for marriage, right? And they're doing their wedding invitations and they go to send them out. You're sending these invitations out to people that you want to come, right? right. So this is what an NFP practicing couple, <clears throat> excuse me, is doing they're saying you know this event is happening at this time and at this place and we want you to come it's an Mm -hmm. invitation to god versus a couple who's using birth control is saying this event is happening at this time and at this place but we don't want you to come you're not invited you're not invited it's a disinvitation sure so that is basically the heart of the difference is that it's an invitation to invite god in and keeping the aspect of how he created Uh, man and woman coming together for babies and bonding and how they cannot be separated. So I think the whole of the Catholic Catholic bioethic, right, is like if I can summarize Catholic bioethics as a whole, it basically boils down to you can fix parts of your body that are broken and you can't break parts of your body that work correctly, right? And I've always thought that that seems so simple and so obvious, but you have so many people who argue against it so strongly. And um, not to get super into this, but staying on with the with the contraception every single christian denomination in the history of christendom held the uh, the church's current stance on contraception until what 1930 was that is it 30 the lambeth conference of the with the episcopalians i meant to look at that this morning for the actual date i knew that question was coming up yeah i think you're right i don't have the exact year so from jesus Mm -hmm. (laughs) until the mid 1900s all of us agreed. Mm-hmm. And then yep. the Dern Episcopalians decided, oh, no, actually, it turns out that, that truth changes. Uh, and it turns out that morals can shift. Uh, God changes his mind sometimes. Now it's okay. And then after that, we see one after the other after the other. And now I believe that it's just the the Catholics. And I, I'm not even sure if the Orthodox still have an absolute stance uh, against against uh, contraception. So but The whole thing's crazy to me because nothing has changed, like, biologically or theologically, you know? Like nothing has changed from the first year. It, it, nothing has changed. Right. And I always like to teach that is that NFP can be used regardless of your faith tradition, that we were all designed the same way. And so we're all called and able to um, uphold the mm-hmm. beauties of how we were made, which is to embrace our fertility rather than run from it. And that's one of the beauties of NFP. No, absolutely. And I would argue that it's not even solely a, a moral a moral issue. Let's take morality out of it. I think uh, I think you guys have some stuff to talk about in regards to um, in regards to the physical consequence. We were saying before the show started, there's been this big movement recently towards NFP from totally secular society as part of this like natural i think i use the word hippy dippy but that's not what i meant like we're very hippy dippy in my household in that regard but this as as we move against or away from all of these just what what modernity has done physically to our bodies in regards to chemicals introduced and everything from microplastics to what have you so do you want to you want to touch on that a little bit 
Sure. Um, I have um, a lot of information about artificial birth control. Um, there, let me pull this up real quick. Oh, there are yeah. side effects she with every every method of birth control out there. Um, so here is the one, here's the, the section that I have on side effects from the one everybody thinks of most, the pill. Contraceptive related side effects include mes menstrual and bleeding irregularities, nausea, headache, breast tenderness, fatigue, irritability, decreased libido, increased weight, involuntary or uncontrollable emotional displays, uh, migraine, proliferation of abnormal cells in the cervix, breast and cervical cancer, blood clots, high blood pressure, gallbladder disease, liver function, <laughs> <laughs> liver function disturbances, tumors and disease, hypersensitivity and allergies, changing glucose tolerance and insulin resistance, skin reactions, inflammatory bowel disease, abnormally high potassium levels, and other medical complications. So that's oh. the whole list. And words. they didn't even put them yeah. all in there. Where's that, where's that from? This is from um, the institute that I'm learning to teach with mm -hmm. FEM, which stands for Fertility Education and Medical Management. Cool. So. I just wanted to, to clarify that that's not from like Catholic Bob's Catholic <laughs> no. ideas on no, yeah. Catholic stuff. FEM is not like a, a religious organization at all. Um, and every method has their own side I mean, effects. Class Even one carcinogen. Yes. I'm sorry, say that one more time. Class one carcinogen. I mean, you. it's unbelievable. Which in layman's terms means it gives you cancer. It's, yeah. Okay. Cancer yeah. causing agent. Cancer. It's unbelievable. Like the the lack of education right. regarding this. And this is a whole nother maybe can of worms, but <clears throat> the couples that I teach, like how many of them will come and they'll say like, if only we had been told. So if you talk about like informed consent, like those couples out there are likely not being informed for a consent because of the vast number of people who are like, if we had known what mm -hmm. you simply just told us now, we would have never made that choice to have signed up right. for birth control mm -hmm. because of what it's doing. So why why do you think that we are so ill-informed? Because I, this is, uh, just to go down once again, another little bit of rabbit hole, part of the reason why, I honestly think that the reason that I'm Catholic today is when I was 15 years old, I found out that the church, the church's stance on contraception, and I didn't care at all about contraception mm -hmm. as a 15-year-old. It was actually because the church was saying like, hey, you know this thing that's super popular and super pervasive and everybody does it? Doesn't matter. Still immoral because we, it, truth doesn't change. Sorry. Right. right? Mm -hmm. And that's what made me think, oh my goodness, maybe there's something to this weird organization over here. And I started looking into it. But why is it that so many people are so ill-informed? What, what do you think? It totally goes back into when the pills are prescribed. Mm -hmm. um, doctors, I think, aren't even told the risks that come with it. So when a young teenager comes in and says, I have really painful periods, they say, right. okay, we're going to put you on the pill. This will regulate your period. Um, and if you ever decide you want to have a baby, you just stop taking it and you'll be fine. Um, the underlying problem is never addressed. They never discuss any of the side effects. They don't they don't even read the insert in right. the packaging mm -hmm. of the pill because they have all of these risks. It comes with the pill in the box. You have the, this, it's like a book mm -hmm. of all the potential side effects. Um, and it's just, it's not talked about because it's the only thing me, that works. Right, I've had people tell me that they were they were prescribed oral contraception as 11 and 12 year olds yeah. because of acne, because of skin yes. problems. I mean, it's it's ridiculous. It seems like it's treated like this cure-all thing. Mm -hmm. It's a Band-Aid. And nobody's talking about what we're doing to mm -hmm. our preteen and teenage girls by yeah. putting them on this stuff. It's a total lack of education. So I taught um, for an organization that helped teach like medical professionals mm -hmm. and they would get credits for learning about fertility awareness. Sure. And to your point, like they, a lot of providers, they just don't know. You're saying the providers don't the know? The providers do not know about the actual effectiveness of natural family planning. Right. They might have a snippet of what an FP is in medical school or whatnot, but the actual like details and the depth of where this has now come through science right. and research like I teach the Marquette method of NFP. Mm -hmm. There's an entire institute for natural family planning at Marquette University. And they are like helping trailblaze. I call them the trailblazers. Um, and when I say that, like trailblazing into, into like a lot of research right. into NFP. I mean, this is not like grandma's rhythm method anymore. Right. This is truly scientific. 
and developing protocols and all sorts of things based off of research. So I promise we're going to dig more into NFP, but I still, I, I'm not ready to let go of contraception quite yet. I know. What is it that makes it so dangerous? Let's talk oral contraceptives in particular. We've, we've listed off all of these things, mm -hmm. right? Can you give us a quick overview of what's actually happening with the woman's cycle, talking about yeah. estrogen and progesterone, and then talking about just what what is it, what is actually happening inside the body of the 11, 15, 27, 40 year old, you know, woman who's who's taking hormonal contraceptives. Absolutely. So a woman's reproductive cycle is a, an interplay between her brain and her ovaries. Um, there are hormones that the brain will launch to tell the ovaries to start to develop an egg. As the egg develops and grows, it starts to produce estrogen. Um, when estrogen produces to a level that that brain hormone turns off and another one turns mm -hmm. on called luteinizing hormone, which makes the, it essentially just makes you ovulate. And then mm -hmm that follicle where the egg was turns into a corpus luteum that produces progesterone and that shuts the brain off again from that luteinizing hormone. Um, estrogen and progesterone work really well together just to enhance the overall health of a woman. So it's really fascinating the number of sy systems in the body that are affected by estrogen and progesterone. Mm -hmm. Your bones, your brain, your entire blood system, so blood pressure, clotting, all those things. Um, oh, what was the... I really, I just think it's so interesting the way that we see um, estrogen affect women. Their brain is like working better right. when they're most fertile because their estrogen is high. Their muscles are stronger when they have high estrogen. Um, and then pro progesterone just like maintains everything. It mm. helps heal your brain um, and recovery of your muscles, maintains your bone minerals. Um, it's so fascinating, all the number, the, just the number oh of systems sure. that are affected. So even like breast tissue changes throughout mm -hmm. the cycle, um, proliferating and then maintaining. Um, and when you introduce a contraceptive, it shuts off all of the hormones. The brain and the ovary are not communicating like that. There's right. it's usually a progestogen um, that's just going to tell the brain, don't, don't start any of that. So that whole cascade does not ever happen. Um, and they just kind of stay level throughout the month. They don't get the benefits of estrogen. They don't get the benefits of progesterone. They're going to feel like every woman does right before her period, which is horrible, <laughs> um, just for All the extended periods of time. Sure. And then the period that they have, I use air quotes for people no, who are yeah. listening, yeah. Um, it's just a withdrawal bleed. Their uterus is not producing and proliferating the way that it's supposed to. Um, it's just a withdrawal bleed. The hormones Which are gone. And it's such a disservice to girls to right. be told your period will be lighter when it's mm -hmm. not even a period. A That's period. what I was about to say. It's a, it's a, it's a not no. period. It's no. a false period. Yes. Ovulation drives. And I'm not an expert on how birth control pills work, yeah. but my understanding is that a lot of times what it is is you begin taking placebo pills, right? At the end of your hormone pills. That pills. causes a withdrawal bleed. Just, right. Yep. Or iron I mean, one of the main mechanism of actions is to suppress ovulation. Then you yeah. have a change in your cervical mucus, right? Which is another reason for contraception, mm -hmm. right? Another mechanism. And then the, uh, another mechanism, which is kind of the heavy part. I mean, it all is, but a very heavy part of that is the thinned uterine lining. Mm -hmm. So for the faithful, that's the part where you have to really teach people with mercy because of the heaviness of what it can do. Okay. So if there is a, a breakthrough ovulation mm -hmm. and there is a conception, you know, it can act as abortifacient because of the, the mechanism of this thin uterine lining and the hostility at the uterus for right. implantation. Right. And I mean, that's, that's interesting because you usually hear, you'll hear people who will draw a hard line on abortifacents, right? I'm not going to take a plan B pill. I'm not going to do whatever. But, but what you're saying is that that's already happening it sometimes as a result of the uterine yeah. thinning. That's yeah. the, okay. And it's effective. Is, is it happening all the time? No. But what I like to teach, and I'm sure you would agree, is do we even want to have that like possibility right. that that could be happening, Right. And, you know, like a, a progestin-only pill, that the suppression of ovulation is not the primary mechanism. Mm -hmm. And so you have just a thickened cervical mucus and a thin uterine lining, and women are ovulating. Right. And we're working on other mechanisms. So could it sure. be happening more often? Likely. Valeria, you mentioned a minute ago you got into a little bit of the psychological impact. Right, mm -hmm. you were talking about how you know a, a woman basically feels like she does right before her her period starts. Um, what does that? I mean, 
I don't know that much about the female brain chemistry. I've been I've been married to to a, a wonderful woman for twelve years, um, but I am curious, like what kind of an impact that has psychologically, other than she doesn't feel good for a while. You mentioned something to think about mate selection earlier, which oh my I thought God. was super mm-hmm. interesting. Yeah. There's so much to say. I feel like I my mind this entire segment so far is just like spinning and like, say this. <laughs> I Really quick, hopefully it comes back to that. When you mentioned the hormones and flatlining for the listeners, if they can get the visual of like, you know, a dramatic like medical show where like the person's on the cardiac monitor and like the heart rhythm is going up and down and up and down. That is what a healthy fertility looks like where hormones are rising and falling and when you're contracepting hormonally, the the flat line appearance is what these hormones are doing. And so I like to k- kind of liken that to what the world is experiencing with using these is essentially this flat lined experience. Mm-hmm. Couples are experiencing death. And that's what happens in these medical shows, right? The like the cardiac monitor is going up and down, up and down, and then it flat lines. Right. And the person dies. Sadly, that's what's going on here is that these couples are experiencing the sense of death where the the line is, you know, the hormone levels are, are just flat. Sure. But what was the question? Because I totally didn't answer that. Psychological effects. Psychological effects. effects. Mate oh, mate selection. Yeah. Ha. Ha. Well, there are studies and I, I am definitely not like the statistician and I am actually not very good with research, but Janet Smith has a contraception why not which is a fabulous resource and she went into mate selection with like gorillas yeah and basically when gorillas it showed mate selection and the changes in that with introduction of hormones Mm -hmm. and basically like the gorillas or apes whatever you want to call them they would change their partner when the partner was shot up with i believe it was depra provera who was changing partners the male or the female uh, my understanding was the male. Which was leaving who? Okay. Yeah. Don't quote me on it. Pretty sure of that. Mm-hmm. But the, the gorilla would change its partner when the partner, yeah, was shot up. Mm-hmm. The girl, um, gorilla, ape, was shot up and then would move on to another one. And then that partner would be shot up with the hormone and the gorilla That's interesting. would move on. Right. And at the end, they were all shot up and the one male went to another male. That's interesting because all, Cause the, all females, the females, right? And by shout up, you mean they had the contraception, depo, contraceptive okay. injection, and as a result, they were no longer fertile, and that plays into everything with, yes. I, I with mean, just collection. mammalian biology yes. and pheromones yeah, and all pheromones. these things, right? Oh, that's a big topic. Yeah, yeah. Well, pheromones. It affects the woman's mate selection yep. too. So not only are the men less attracted because the the lack of pheromones, but they are attracted to different men. Mm-hmm. Um, like we have some systems while on the pill, they're attracted. Yeah, different. while on yeah. the pill. Okay. Mm-hmm. So we have some systems in our brain that help us to pick um, mates that are like genetically compatible mm-hmm. with us. And on the pill, they're choosing like the opposite. So that when people are on the pill and dating and marrying people, they're more likely to have children that have like health issues mm-hmm. because they're not genetically compatible with each other no, that's terrifying yeah and, it's so and, scary uh, yeah. and when they get you're married and you transition off they're you're not can, attracted anymore and they're like there can yeah. be a hold up because Whoa. it's a different person <laughs> it is interesting that in order for people to have quote-unquote consequence consequence free sex they're killing their own sex drive and all of the things that would make yeah. them want to have sex to begin with mm-hmm. um i i i'm i'm gonna I'll, I'll probably butcher this but i usually when we talk about this in theology i say i give my big pitch at the end for taking the pill and i say if you want to make yourself unhealthy and change your psychology so that you can have crappy sex with somebody you're not attracted to, then you should absolutely consider oral contraception. (laughs) Um, We're going to have to do like 18 more of these because I have no idea (laughs) how it's possible to cover all the stuff that we need to cover. We literally went through another dozen topics that we wanted to get to off air. um, And none of them actually had much to do with NFP, which is the purpose of this show. So I want to ask one last question about contraception and then roll in to some more positive topics of of NFP. And we've answered this in some ways, but I feel like it's important to sort of confront face on if the pill is so dangerous, if 
all the all the other not because I, I want to make sure that we're saying not just that the pill is dangerous, but everything from the implants to the IUDs to the whatever it is, spermicidal, everything. Right. If all of these methods of contraception are so dangerous, why do we still use them is and maybe the answer is a simple like I'm going to answer it right now. But is consequence free sex just worth destroying the bodies of women? For our sake, it seems like the most anti-feminist thing that I can possibly imagine, but it's birthed out of the sexual revolution mm -hmm. and, and all of this. I don't know. What's y'all's feedback? What are your thoughts? Oh, well, I don't definitely don't think that it's worth it, but I think that most people choose it because it looks easy. Yeah. It does not require okay. any um, active sacrifice. They don't know what they're sacrificing behind the scenes with their health, but it's not like they can be like, I sexually desire this man, so I'm going to go have sex with him. And they don't. That is easy. They don't have to like control their desires or their impulses at all or um, engage in that sacrificial love. It's hard to, to be sacrificial and to lay yourself down. Right. I definitely don't want to understate that. It's not it's not the easy way. It's way better and it's more beautiful, but it is harder. Um, and there's just such a aversion to difficulty right. these days. Everybody just wants to be comfortable. Um, and it's well, easier to just put a patch on. It kills me graphic. from the from the female perspective because in a very uh, not immoral. I mean, not 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 moral by any means, but in a really sort of like crude util utilitarian understanding. I get why a guy would say, "Yes, I want this girl to be on birth control mm -hmm. because I don't want the burden of a child and whatever. I want right. to be able to have sex with her." So, right. God forbid, I have to control myself or make sacrifices. It makes sense, but it seems like even it seems like it's a lose 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 for the females across the board. I don't see I don't see a benefit whatsoever for women, other than I guess what you're saying. I'll no longer needing to, to to control yourselves but it's really sad it's killing me all this I'd really say across out. the board too it would be um a lack of knowledge and a sense of control mm -hmm. i see that a lot that couples feel like they're in control mm -hmm. when they're consuming a pill or have an iud there's just that desire to be in control and a lot of, well, I didn't know that this existed. I right. didn't know that NFP was an option. Right. Had I known, we would have chosen something else. So I think just lack of education and a sense of control. And just, I mean, culturally speaking, we're li kind of living in that. I want it and I want it now. Right. Immediate gratification. You take your pill, you have your sex. So it's right. like, it makes sense living in what we're living in. So. So. Aside from NFP does not have all of these horrible negative side effects, right? What are the benefits of NFP? Because I don't want to just say NFP is good because it's not contraception, which is true. NFP right. is good because it's not contraception, but that's not the primary reason I would argue why NFP is a positive for couples. What do you think? My experience is just within my own marriage for um, the last two mm -hmm. years. Um, but I, uh, I have a personality that doesn't like confrontation or difficult topics mm -hmm. and I cannot not talk to my husband about this even when it feels awkward so right. like it was super awkward at the beginning to be like hey this is what's going on with my cervical mucus um, <laughs> we're gonna, so we're gonna like, get a cervical mucus count every time we say it I think we're up to five now nice, nice. I dig it. Um, that was really difficult to like open up and be vulnerable in that way and to talk about my body because I've, I've it's been something that I, it's just myself sure I don't talk to anybody about it like I don't even talk to my sisters that much about what's mm -hmm. going on um so it's built intimacy into our relationship emotionally that um i don't think would be there if it was just like hey did you take your pill today um yeah so mm -hmm. it's it's more like hey this is where my body's at today like and i can also like one of my favorite ways to keep him involved is that i have an app that i use to track but i print out a paper one. Oh, cool mm -hmm. and he's he's filling in the paper one so he can be like <laughs> he has to ask me also what were your observations today um, and that's so cool. it's putting yeah. him in a bit of a vulnerable spot too, but like, that's a fun way it, it works together. It's not just you go take your pill and I'll, I'll just come to you later. Like it's, it, we're collaborating on that now too. Um, and it's helped my health a lot. I've oh. recognized some health issues I didn't realize I had. Mm -hmm. Um, cause I thought, oh, I'm fine. I'm fine. I'm fine. It's like, no, actually I'm not supposed to feel this way. Right. Um, well, it just seems like, I mean, this is something that 
I'm, I'm talking to high schoolers usually about this, and I've got guys and girls in the class, but uh, something that I've had, I've guest speakers who come in a lot that I think is so great for these girls to hear is like, sex aside, fertility aside, like, this is your body. You should know mm-hmm. how your body works mm-hmm. because it's beautiful mm-hmm. it's, yeah. and wonderfully made, and like, you should you should understand it. From a, as a married woman, just that sense of lack of objectification, like being able to see month in, month out, mm-hmm. that he is controlling himself, like if abstinence is required for a temporary point of time, right. like that he is able to control himself for the greater love of me sure. and the family. That, you know, as a man, he is willing to, as you said, lay his self down for my sake and for our family's sake if, you know, delaying another baby is what's best and we've prayed and discerned that that is what God is asking of us. And to your point, like that is no easy, that is no easy decision. So, you know, we get on, this is a little bit of off topic, but there is a group of people who consider even NFP immoral. So that's maybe like a whole nother topic, but that it is um, wrong to even be using NFP at all. That like, if you're having sex, you should just the baby's in bonding, and it should only be that you're having sex and babies should be, huh, I'm butchering this. How do I? How? Yeah, it's the idea of even avoiding your natural, yes. like right. avoiding your natural fertile window, yes, like that's wrong. wrong because you're still using science to avoid um, having a child is like the opinion. This freaks me out when I was engaged. I was like, oh. sort of. Yeah, I, I've heard it coming at usually from the other perspective, which is, isn't this the same? Aren't you doing the same thing? So you yes. can just use either form. You can use NFP or contraception. Right. Yeah. Like that's the question is like, how are you even using NFP? Because in so using it, get from God. right. No. And it, you should just be open all the time if you're having sex. But the whole point and the thought on that is we're missing like that babies can always come right. from the act. Right. Period. It's never impossible. It's never impossible. Yeah. Right. And we're keeping it united. Anyways, but my point is, is just that that is, it is not easy. So seeing that as the man that he's <clears throat> taking what seems like and what we know to be a very hard route right. for greater love of the spouse. What's, what's always gotten me on sort of that argument, the argument that, well, no, it's the same as contraception, is if abstaining from sex at certain times is contraception, then we are currently all contracepting. Priests are always contracepting. My sister-in-law, who's a nun, is using contraception because she's not having sex, right? Right, right. right now, I'm contracepting because I'm currently not having sex. Like it, It's a ridiculous <laughs> argument to, to even make. Um, and to be clear, I believe that the church's stance, and I don't have the catechism in front of me, but is that, yeah, we, we, we have to be open to, to babies, right? We have to be open to procreation. Sex must be unitive and procreative. And, but we are allowed to, if we have good reason, yep, serious avoid, reasons to avoid, right, to, mm-hmm. to avoid babies. Mm-hmm. Serious reasons are not, I want to go to Disney World this summer and it'd be really inconvenient if, you, right. if my wife were pregnant, right? right? But dealing with physical health, dealing with mental health, dealing with financial situations, dealing with the, the rest of your family, like those are legitimate reasons. Mm-hmm. And I'm not, I don't know better than God does. So I'm not going to trash the church's stance on that. Yeah. And my husband even brought up a really beautiful point. He was like, it, with using NFP, you're still giving God the window. Yep. If we're not having sex at all, right. we're simply saying like, there's no window at all. Right. Like, mm-hmm. I, in in his mind, it was like there's like a, a lack of trust. Right. And just always saying no, yeah. and almost indefinitely, you know, abstaining. Yeah. So, mm-hmm. John Paul II talks. I think it's John Paul II. Pope Paul VI might have brought it up first, but responsible parenthood yeah. mm-hmm. is important too. So parent. exercising our, our gifts of prudence on uh, understanding when it would be irresponsible to right. have a baby. Yeah. Like that is, it is possible to like irresponsibly and selfishly decide I want to have a baby right now. Sure. Yeah. So, but if you want a list, like what greater communication, increased intimacy, mm-hmm. health purposes, mm-hmm. oh my gosh, the list is endless. Um, what else can I say? Well, well, then you know how to achieve pregnancy when, yep. you are, when you do discern. So that's actually a good segue because earlier you mentioned the Marquette method, mm-hmm. um, which begs the question, what are the other methods? And I, I don't know the answer to this. Yeah. And to be totally honest, my wife handles, does a lot of the, the NFP stuff yeah. and we have practiced the let's see what happens method. Um, Love it. 
which has been which has been great. Trying and, to whatever. And we're yeah. yeah, my wife is pregnant with number five, and it's been it's been fantastic. We've never been in a position where we said, okay, we really need to abstain right yeah. now um, with breastfeeding and everything. Our children have been naturally pretty spaced out, and it's been great. Uh, but what? I don't know. Explain to me what the what what the methods are, and I guess my bigger question is why do there need to be different methods of hey, I'm ovulating, I'm going to be ovulating soon. We need to not have sex. Like I don't. Are there different theories and strains of thought in NFP? How's that work? This is fun. This is fun. So <laughs> there, I, like I mean, there are a lot of biomarkers that can be observed. So we can use temperature. We can use cervical mucus, cervical Boom. position. <laughs> um, we can use hormone testing. So you there. Um, there's a monitor that I've used that tests um, estrogen and LH, those mm -hmm. the second and third hormones. The egg is developing and then the egg being launched. Um, and some methods will use a combination. Some will use one by itself. Mm -hmm. um, and I, it's just different areas of research. Basically, a lot of people at the same time started researching methods of family planning that were natural. Um, and so some used symptothermal, which is like your your symptoms. Your, sometimes they use cervical mucus and they use their basal body temperature. Um, other people went with just cervical mucus. Um, oh, yeah. <laughs> for people a, who are listening, he's keeping a tally. I'm, I'm keeping a tally. I'm, yeah. Um, mucus, give mucus, mucus, mucus. Yeah. going to give us an update at the end. Yeah. Um, I'm just desensitizing everybody so they can get yes, used to exactly. talking to their spouses no, about cervical mucus. Let me go mucus. off on that for one second, though. Uh, I like what you said. I'm just desensitizing everybody because it is so true. Why uh -huh. the heck do we have such stigmas around our bodies? Yeah. We all have bodies, right? Half of us have female bodies and the other half have male bodies. Only and two. most of us are going to be just two. Those are the only <laughs> options. And the vast majority of us are going to be sacramentally bound to someone with another kind of body at some point, mm. right? So stop stigmatizing it. It is so husbands who act like it's the grossest thing in the world that their wife is on their period or something grow up that's embarrassing <laughs> well, that's, I, seriously you're sharing it's, juices yeah exactly <laughs> you're allowed to talk well, about it you're allowed to recognize it you're a child if you can't talk to your wife yeah. about her cervical mucus and her menstrual cycle it's so. such a disservice to teen girls not to mm -hmm. ever talk about cervical mucus yes. too because I thought something was wrong with yeah. me for a long time right I was like what is this I'm not on my period what's going on mm -hmm. um and it's actually just my body showing me whether or not I'm fertile. Yeah. Um, it's totally natural, totally normal. You're not sick. It's going to happen every cycle. Yeah. And this um, is a whole, that brings in a whole nother topic, John Henry, on the lack of information where people think that there's something wrong with them. Right. And then they're avoiding one another during the time that they're fertile because they yes. think that the fertile fluid and mucus is unhealthy like, and infection. Oh, <laughs> so that's they're interesting. Staying, so they're not getting pregnant. And then all oh, what happens, they think they're infertile. And because down the infertile route we go. Whoa. And they're getting unnecessary testing. Unnecessary right. treatment, treatment. Unnecessary expenses. It's insane. That's wild. That's Cervical mucus yeah. is that was normal. Tangent. That was totally so, a tangent. Um, no, I love but yeah, then there are also some yeah. methods that just use hormonally based um, observations. So... Um, I like the FEM method a lot because it's a combination. It uses cervical mucus and the LH testing. Okay. Um, it's really straightforward. Um, you can use just the cervical mucus if LH strips are too expensive. Like there's a way that you can just do the cervical mucus. It's free to mm -hmm. observe your cervical mucus. Um, <laughs> yeah, <it's free. laughs> so I like that about it too. But it really, the emphasis with them is your health. Mm -hmm. So fertility, education, and medical management, F-E-M-M. -M, that's where the name FEM comes from. So there are also physicians that are trained through the Reproductive Health Research Institute mm -hmm. um, to treat women who actually do have underlying issues. Sure. So you can observe all of your biomarkers and you can learn about your thyroid um, and you yeah. can learn about like your brain. I, my sister found out she had a microadenoma on her pituitary gland mm -hmm. through tracking her cycle. Um, endometriosis, PCOS, yeah. all these things, your cervical fluid, cervical mucus, whatever you want to call it is going to tell you about that. So oh, yeah. that's super interesting. Oh, yeah. And in that same vein in regards to fertility, something that I've, I've had conversations with lots of individuals and some couples about is as far as the church as far as the church is teaching regarding fertility, we the church does not have an issue with f like addressing fertility issues. A lot right. of times I think because of the church's stance on something like IVF, mm -hmm. people say, oh, well, you just got sex and there's nothing you can do. Yeah. And there's no way around it, right? If you're not getting pregnant from having sex, then you can't go to a doctor. Like I've had that conversation with multiple right. people, which is ridiculous. Mm -hmm. Once again, right? The church's bioethics basically are summed up by saying you can fix broken parts of your body, yes. right? You can't play God though, and you can't break parts that are supposed to work or parts that are working properly. Uh, but from a fertility standpoint, I just think that needs to be said, that needs to be pushed mm -hmm. out there. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. You can't separate 
how conception is supposed to take place. Yeah. Keeps it pretty simple. We should do a we should do an IVF day too. Oh yeah. That's well that that is one that I I've taught multiple classes and had multiple kids in my classroom who've been very upset. Right, because they were conceived through yeah. in vitro fertilization, and you know, there's I always every time I bring up IVF, I like to couch it with, "We're not saying that the Child. human that is created is at fault or right. any less of a human being." Right. I had one kid, like in tears, worried that they like weren't going to have a soul or oh, something. I was like, oh "No, this has no. nothing to do with you. You no. are doing so great." And we're not saying that your parents are evil because no. they did this. Mm-hmm. I'm saying that they were probably ignorant. Yeah, uh, lack of information. And yes. and they, they they didn't realize it, but it has no impact on you. And God wants you to exist, and we're so glad you're here. Right. Just the so, means. Mm-hmm. And you know, I, I would say that even in my counseling within teaching. We have couples within the Catholic world who have sought out spiritual direction or mm-hmm. even gone to a confessor and even been counseled that certain procedures like that are okay. Mm-hmm. So I want to kind of have a PSA out there to be very mindful of who you're seeking out right. for clarification that something is permissible. Right. Because I did have a dear Catholic woman who is told by her priestly council that it was okay to participate and i can't even remember which specific um procedure it was i think it was iui Mm -hmm. intrauterine insemination um and to her understanding like it was okay right and when we had the conversation that you know that that wasn't obviously truth and love it was a beautiful conversation but when she kind of came to that revelation like wow this actually wasn't okay quote unquote right there, I mean, it was very heavy. Nonetheless, as I said, it was a beautiful encounter because the truth came to be, right? right. Darkness was brought to light. And my point is, just be careful on who you're yeah. seeking counsel from. Well, and so much of it has to do with the the really successful job modern media has done with branding us as a bunch of bigots who hate people who do things that are sinful. Yeah. As if we are not all people who do things that are yes. sinful all the mm-hmm. time, right? right? And me saying, me calling a sin a sin does not mean that I'm saying, you're oh, sinless. you're a terrible person, right? right? Yeah. And I'm amazing and you right. suck. Right. That's right. not but, even us saying I don't commit that sin sometimes. Exactly. Like, well, well I, had a, I had a friend who uh, in marital counseling, was uh, he was marrying a girl who was Protestant. And the priest said, well, you are Catholic, so no, you can't use any form of contraception. She's Protestant. She's fine. Right. And it is. I think that that is that is going away. I think sort of that. I think some of our some of our priests who ascribe to more of that loosey goosey modernist messaging. Um, I think they're getting older and I don't think any of the young ones are right. very few of right. the young ones are of that variety. Um, but it's it's still out there. And it is because yeah. you'll hear a lot in confessions that, you know, women are told, well, you were open to life. Mm-hmm. You've yeah, done your open too. to life thing. You yeah. have five children. You have whatever. Right. Yeah. So, you know, follow your conscience. Oh. Yeah. You fulfilled very, your duty. Very you concerning. Right. You very concerning right. now. And to reiterate, the church's stance is also not you should have children all the time. You should Correct. always be pregnant mm-hmm. all the time. It's no a discernment. Right. right. Discernment's key. So I want to talk really briefly. We've talked a lot about this from sort of a scientific standpoint. Um, I want to off air earlier we were talking about the biblical basis for this uh for the church's teaching on on all of this and we were talking about a a a misconception that happens a lot i will not be able to quote chapter and verse uh i am i'm not i'm I'm not baptist shout out to the (laughs) baptists you're really good at that Um, but the story of onan in the old testament right and to give you the real quick summary of onan what happens is onan's brother dies and then onan is supposed to uh have sex with his brother's widow impregnate her to give his brother heirs Right. And those children are not going to be Onan's. They're going to be right. Legalistically, they're going to be his brothers uh, so that his name can live on. And right. That the house of whatever is going to continue. And so he does it. Right. He has sex with his brother's widow. But then he uses the quote unquote pull out method. Mm-hmm. Right. And I think the the beautiful biblical language is spills his seed upon the ground. Mm-hmm. Right. And then God. <laughs> Kills him because Old Testament <laughs> yeah. guy was really black and white with some of this stuff. We we appreciate the the clarity there, Lord, and um, and so that's the that's the biblical basis. But something that I want to want to address because it comes up a lot when I'm having conversations about contraception is the accusation that no 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 that's not the evil committed by Onan was not 
making this act non-procreative, right? It was not the quote-unquote pull-out withdrawal method. Uh, it was refusing to father heirs for his brother, right? But if we skip ahead a little bit, we get to, I believe, Deuteronomy, right? Uh, the law is very clear about what the penalty for sleeping or for not sleeping with your brother's widow and producing heirs for him is and it is public humiliation you get slapped in the face with your sandal or maybe her sandal or something and uh it's this big embarrassing thing not god spews down <laughs> lightning from the heavens to kill you and it's one of those things that I just always like to bring this up for all of our brothers and sisters who ascribe to sort of a sola scriptura understanding mm. like we're not making this stuff up. This isn't all. This isn't extra biblical. Yes, we believe that divine and revelation is both scripture and tradition. But we got back up for all this stuff, y'all. We're proud mm -hmm. of it. Yeah. So wanted to throw that out there. Well, uh, <laughs> you're you're smarter than I. I'm like, wait, where in the Bible? I'm clearly <laughs> very Catholic part. over here. <laughs> I'm. I am. Uh, I need to do some sola scriptura for maybe a day to learn about my biblical roots here big shout out to father mike schmidt bible of the year man That's, do i need yeah. to jump <laughs> on that yeah. while you're talking i'm also like thinking about like applying that mm -hmm. into the world of nfp within marriage if i can just throw this out there i get the question a lot of well like how far is too far yes and like if we're needing yeah. to try to avoid maybe holy spirit thank you holy spirit activate um how far is too far mm -hmm. during that fertile time? So, like, if we've discerned the You're saying within married couples, within how married couples, is, right, like talking right. about you know uh, marital chastity, when that mm -hmm. needs to be, when their discernment has taken place, and we need to try to be avoiding a baby at that time during the fertile window. How far is too far? You know, and basically, you know, I could really go into that, but to come back home to the teachings is making sure that foreplay. Right. Yeah. Getting each other aroused right. and doing those sexual um, activities, right. all of these things end with intercourse. Right. right. Like that is pretty straightforward. Mm -hmm. But you you would be surprised on how confusing that that is, where it's like, well, we'll just take like the roundabout way. We'll still get the mm -hmm. jollies and participate in other sexual encounters right. while bypassing sexual intercourse, mm -hmm. but all the while still having orgasm at the end. Well, and. From my from my understanding, once again, I don't have the catechism in front of me, but the church's teaching is is basically you can like from a foreplay standpoint, those things are okay right. as long as you're not degrading the other person as yes. a human being. So yes. I'm not going to give examples of that, but yes. I think we can all come up with some of those. Yes. Right. But the act still has to end. Yes. Right with actual vaginal intercourse right. and right that is that is procreative. Right. I just had to throw that in there with you mentioning that scripture. No, I dig it. It's awesome. Y'all, this is fantastic. I, I We are running out of time really quickly, and we're going to get to cards in a minute. But before we finish, wh right now, if I'm listening to this, where can I go? What website? What book? We already talked about Contraception, Why Not? Janet Smith. That's wonderful. I cannot recommend that enough. But what are some resources that I could find on NFP or even on the, uh, the moral or physical evils of contraception if I'm listening right now and curious to learn more? Yeah, my um, number one recommendation for resources on the health benefits of NFP, um, I think the side effects of contraception are probably on there somewhere too, is the FEM website. So it's FEMM.org. Um, and that's going to have like why use FEM, who can use FEM, all of those kinds of things on there. Um, if you're looking for maybe like um, practical tips or more theology, there's so many good books out there. Um, my most recent one, um, actually, I guess my favorite author on this topic is probably Dr. Gregory Popchak. Um, I read Just Married, The Catholic Guide to Surviving and Thriving in the First Five Years of Marriage most recently. That is great for your entire marriage, not just NFP and theology entwined, but it was it was so good. Um, and he has another book that's called Holy Sex. And yeah, that was Holy Sex fantastic yep. um, on why I use NFP, the benefits of NFP, um, not just like the emotional intimacy like we were talking about, but like you can actually have better sex. Um, really great book. I don't recommend reading it if you're not married, um, but it is a really good book. Yeah. Um, and then there are courses all over the place if you want to actually learn a method. Mm -hmm. um, the FEM website will have resources for that um, if you want to use that method, but there, there are so many methods out there. You can also go onto the Archdiocese website and find teachers that are um, like thumbs up from the Archdiocese. Cool. Different methods with, you know, 
USCCB guided. Mm-hmm. I think just because of the theology, I'm assuming. Because with so. them, with medical management, it's that's like not a religious base. It's not a religious okay. organization. Okay. Marquette um, and Creighton are right. Marquette, Creighton, Billing, Symptothermal, which before we end really quick, progesterone, I had to add this in. It's a Holy Go Spirit thing. The whole like culture says that life doesn't begin until implantation, mm-hmm. right? This is what we're guided in these mm-hmm. days. Our science, like a woman's body temperature rises with ovulation. FYI, that's like seven to 10 days before implantation. So science alone with just looking at progesterone proves that life begins at conception. Right. Conception happens, a woman's body temperature or an ovulation happens, your body temperature shoots up New life happens right then because your body becomes warmer. I was like gonna say, it's incubator. incubating the egg. It's an incubator. Yeah. Not seven right. to ten days later when like all this literature and your pamphlets say uh, new Big life dog. begins or uh, right or oh yeah, this isn't inhibiting conception. Oh. Right. Think again. Anyways, how to add that in there. Um but yeah, the Creighton, Billing, Symptothermal, Marquette, those are USCCB approved methods um i'm assuming it's that just because it takes on the theology side Mm -hmm. maybe creighton doesn't but it's just i I honestly don't know enough about what makes it usccb approved or not but um nonetheless the methods are incredible and they're going to use different indicators to help develop protocols and so some of them might be great like um i i do so many podcasts that i listen to um and i've heard stories from women who like um say Creighton worked really well yep. at the beginning of their marriage. And then when they had their baby and their body went kind of crazy, they switched to Marquette because yep. the hormones are easier gotcha. to discern than more like objective data. Mucus. Yeah. Okay. Again, something else to talk about. Oof. Cool. Yeah. Well, y'all, this is then, really great. Good news about sex and marriage by yes. Christopher oh, West. Oh, sure. Number one. Anything Christopher it, West. Is yeah. Good news about also sex and marriage. Also go read Humana Vitae while we're Humana throwing stuff out there. Yeah. Big the body reveals the God. Six. The yeah. body reveals God is another good the. Uh, Theology of the Body book. It's really simplified, and you can do like a book study on it. That's fantastic. Well, thank you, ladies. Yes. Thank you so much for being here. We are uh, we probably won't be able to get this part on the radio, but I still like doing cards. You want to yeah, do cards, Absolutely. Ben? We're yeah. going to do cards. All right, cool. <laughs> Can't leave so it off. So the way this works, you pick one of your favorite questions on the card, and then you answer it. It is designed for like seven to ten-year-olds or something. <laughs> oh um, that way everything is uh, above board for radio, mm-hmm. uh, and Sarah's going to start with her favorite oh, whenever gosh. she's ready. Uh, I guess my favorite dessert. Now that I have to eat gluten free, um, cheesecake. Oh, oh yes. Yeah, but yeah, I can't right. eat it now. But yeah, that's my favorite dessert. Yeah, but but every time anybody's ever gotten that question, I always say that we, we're going to take out the S, one of the S's, and now it's your favorite desert. What's your favorite desert? Which one's your favorite? Oh my gosh, <laughs> my favorite desert because I've been to all of them. <laughs> Mojave, Sahara, right? The Gobi. Sahara Desert. Oh. Sahara. I'm name. on Team Kalahari uh, all day, so I would be, we're gonna disagree. I would be dishonorable to my name to not yeah. choose the Sahara. So. That's fair. That's fair. <laughs> Whenever okay. you're ready. Oh uh, man, these are all good questions. Oh, what you gosh, think? How do I choose one? Um, because there's so many answers to these <laughs> questions. Like, what gets you excited? There you go. NFP. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Someone who's willing to talk about NFP with yeah. me. Oh my gosh. Cervical mucus. Cervical mucus, mucus gets cervical me mucus. excited. Which brings us if to you know 16 what cervical <laughs> mucus references for the day. Uh, next next time we do this, the, the word count I'm going to put towards the word uh, viscosity when discussing viscosity. cervical mucus. Yeah, we can gosh. talk about that if you want to yeah. go into how to actually interpret uh, biomarkers. That's awesome. <laughs> cool. All right, producer Ben. All right. You have to you... use the word cervical mucus in your answer. <laughs> 17 for the day. I will not be doing that. <laughs> okay, that's fine. <laughs> if you could star in any movie, what would you choose? And, you know, I could pick one of my favorite movies like La La Land or Rango, but I'm going to choose a movie that doesn't exist. Okay. But that I feel like would be really great. And is I would love to play Arnold in a dramatic retelling of The Magic School Bus, like an oh, HBO oh, Max no, original. You can't because you're already rocking the look. Yeah, uh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Could it be like a gritty reboot? That's exactly what I was thinking. Like okay. HBO Max Last of Us kind yeah. of. Yeah. Like, but it's but with the magic school, school bus. bus? Yeah. I like that a lot, actually. <laughs> um, we could do a magical school bus NFP episode. <laughs> there we can go. we do an animated magical school bus <laughs> NFP episode? We definitely have the budget for <laughs> yeah, it. I think so. Uh, we just said we have more money than we know what to do with over here, honest to God. <laughs> so much. Um, all right, so I'm going to 
I'm going to do this one. What is one thing about your mom or dad that you really appreciate? Aww. Aww. Is, that, is that really on the card? That's, yeah, it's the last nice. question on there. Uh, Mother's, Day is tomorrow. Mother's Day is tomorrow. Yeah. These must be old so cards. One thing that I really appreciate about my mom and dad is the fact that they are so open to what they consider to be our really weird lifestyle that does not make any sense to them. Uh, and they have never, you know, we're very different than them in every way. We're, mm -hmm. We live out in the middle of nowhere on the side of a mountain and we keep working with God to create human beings and we raise <laughs> all these animals and we do all these bizarro things. And uh, they have never once like made us feel weird or bad they've been like okay i don't understand that at all but we love you guys so much Aww. and we can't wait to come see the new baby and and whatever so big nice. shout out to judy and pat love you guys thanks so much for being wonderful happy mother's day mom no she's our one listener in qatar yeah yeah uh -huh. My mom's not in Qatar. She lives in America still. <laughs> oh. uh, all right. And that is all the time we have here today. Um, I did toss a card to my right, but it's just floating out in the infinite abyss somewhere, somewhere over there. Uh, but thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. Sarah Valera, thank you so much for being here. You are listening to AM 1160 The Quest, Atlanta's Catholic Radio. This is Honest to God. Producer Ben. Signing off. Over and out.